Scorching temperatures turning once fertile ground into barren dust. Blame it on climate change. More frequent and severe storms feeling damage in low-lying areas? Again, climate change. Scientists say the problem is what we call climate change can be more subtle and much more complex. Climate change definitely has a lot of impact on the variation. Liu's team of climate scientists at the University of Michigan poured over climate data throughout China covering more than half a century from 1960 through 2013. They focused on much more than temperature, examining the effects of rain and snow, the amount of sun exposure, and soil moisture. China proved to be a challenge. I think China is one of the countries with the highest uh, variation in terms of the, the variabilities in the climate factors. This map details the changes. Orange shows the greatest difference in variables, followed by yellow, then green. This is important because northeastern China is a rich area for growing food and experiences the greatest amount of climate chaos. This chaos can not only disrupt food supplies for China's megacities in the south, Northern China's unpredictable weather could be catastrophic elsewhere on the planet. Those climate change will have impact on food security, not just in China, but also affect the other part of the world as well, because the food security in China will affect the food production and the food supply and the food price in other parts of the world. What's the best way to combat the ebb and flow of these variables? Lu says the quickest solution is to control greenhouse gas emissions, blame for raising the global temperature. His team is also encouraging farms to alter the crops they grow to suit regions dramatically affected by rainfall and where sun exposure differs. Now this data has been out there for years, so why is this only now coming to light? The researchers say China is a huge nation and gathering all of that information was difficult and a tedious process. And lastly, they needed a database that would span 50 years or more so they were able to spot patterns on it. You talk about this tedious work and how much effort there is to collect all this information, but it really just shows how one country can be affected by so many different variables. Well, exactly, and I think that's the big thing that they're trying to hammer away because people talk about climate change, that, that the temperature going up, the earth being warmer, but there's a lot more to it than that. Areas that get a certain amount of sunlight, are they getting more, are they getting less? How is that being affected with cloud cover uh, moving in? In, especially rainfall, what is that doing to the soil? And an area in like uh, Heilongjiang uh, in northeastern China, that is an area that has been traditionally very cold. Well, it has gotten somewhat warmer since just 1980. And now uh, they chiefly grow uh, uh, corn, soybeans, beets uh, up in that area. And that's important because if these variables would disrupt a pattern like that, it would not only have an effect in China, but it, it, that same kind of thing is going on in other corners of the world, so that's important. And it's very important for China because they can only farm about 10% of the land with more than 300 million farmers. They're still able to feed about 20% one out of five people in the whole world. Incredible numbers there. What about uh, the researchers' words of caution that we need to find ways to control the release of greenhouse gas emissions, especially with the United States pulling out of the uh, Paris Climate Accord? Yeah, I think that is one thing that they're really trying to drive home. And if you think about it, virtually every nation on Earth is saying what the U.S. did, what the Trump administration did, is going to have long-suffering effects unless uh, they're able to turn this around or find a way to severely limit the amount of greenhouse gases uh, that are uh, being uh, re released from the U.S. Uh, that's something very important. Uh, clearly, that's uh, the number one thing that critics, scientists point to that is heating up the atmosphere and having this effect. Now, take a look at that area like the Arctic, an area that's warming up faster, twice as fast as any other place on Earth. Just recently, we did a story about the fact that the winds coming out of that area are being uh, adversely affected by climate change. And that's important in an area like China, where the wind used to come, this, the jet stream used to blow through uh, Beijing and that area during the winter. Well, now it's moved to the north. And that's bad because all that punishing smog and pollutants that hang in the air, they're staying there. So if you're wondering how can something affect spot A when we're talking about spot B, Virtually every area of the globe is affected by climate change, and these, this nuance, the minuscule parts that they're focusing on in this study are extremely important. All right, Sean Caleb, thanks for that.